This is it. This is it. Last topic of geometry. This is it. This is where the course ends. It's a two day topic because you definitely need another day to practice this stuff. I'd appreciate it if there's no whining, way too much whining second period, way too much about how tough this was. Look at your schedule again and remind yourself what type of geometry you're in. All right, we don't need any whining. I heard enough of it second period. Density. I think you've talked about that in maybe science class a couple times, all right? Density, mass divided by volume. How do I know I'm the number in a problem is the density? Look at the label. The label will always have something cubed in it because what type of problems do we leave our units cubed? Volume. And that's the bottom of density equals mass divided by volume. All right. So as I'm reading a problem with you today, we should be able to identify, oh, that's the density because I got cube on the end. I got cube in the denominator. This right here, you've probably never even noticed it. That's the top of your formula sheet. Why am I going to need that? We're going to switch units like it's nobody's business today. All right. So a lot of those will be used, uh, maybe not today, but eventually to convert some units. All right. You ready to roll? Density. Two day topic. End of geometry. You guys can go ahead and read through it. Um, we're getting to the finish line here. You guys can read yourself. All right. Question one. Determine the density of this cube. Density of this cube. Density equals mass divided by the volume. I will not give you this formula on Tuesday's test. It's not on the formula sheet. So please keep that in mind. All right, we are solving for D density. What's the 137.8? Where's that go here? Uh, let's roll five, 137.8 grams. M, that's my mass. That's what I'm weighing in here, yep. What's the V stand for again? Six. Volume of this cube. This is when this unit takes over now. Volume of a cube. Cube is another name for what that we've talked about? Which one of the polyhedrons we've talked about, which a cube would fit under? Prism. Correct. So what's the volume for a prism? What's the volume formula for a prism? 19? BH, yep, where all the edges, all the edges are the same. So if you want a little, six by six, six. That's what, that's what this cube looks like. All right, could somebody help me find the volume of the cube then? Uh, six, volume of the cube, but what am I gonna multiply together? Yep, six times six for the base, times six for the height, 216. And please read the rounding directions. We haven't seen this maybe ever this year, huh? Thousandth, how many numbers after the decimal is somebody gonna give me? Three, ah, three numbers after the decimal. So make sure we look at that fourth one to round or not. Get my act together here. All right, what do you got for me? 18 point six three eight. Thanks, Claire. Uh, somebody asked second period. What do you leave the units as? Density, right? Well, what's the formula? What's the formula for density? Mass. What was our mass here in what type of units? Grams per, what was the volume measurement here? Centimeters, Centimeters cubed. So that's how I'd leave your answer for density. And now part B. 
state which type of wood the cube is made of. If we just found the density of it and they have a density table there for you. 21, this is a made of ash wood, yeah. That was just a little sniff right there, kids. A little sniff, a little taste of uh, density. Wait till you see what's next. And I'll, I'll be honest, this next problem I'm going to show you probably shouldn't be in density day because it has nothing to do with density, but it is a hardcore honors geometry problem, so I'm, I left it in. Go back to BTUs from your homework the other night. Go ahead, read through it. Let's roll. That's right. That was a hallway one, huh? It's like my collar blew a little bit. <laughs> All right, here we go. So how many BTUs to uh, cool the room? Uh, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. We got a Regents in less than five weeks. You get this problem on the Regents. How do you know it's going to be volume? What in this problem signifies it is volume problem? Avery? Cubic foot of airspace. Yes, cubic foot right there. Cubic foot it says I got to find the volume. All right, you got it. Let's take this one figure at a time. How do you classify the top figure? That's a what? The top figure is what type of polyhedron? Eight. Um, okay, so we're going to do the triangular prism. Plus, what do you call that polyhedron on the bottom? Three. Rectangular, Rectangular prism. Good work. Good work from both of you. Both of them have the formula BH because they're pris prisms. All right, you ready for the triangular prism? B stands for area of the base. What shape is that base on top? Three again, Eva, what shape is that base? It's a triangle. So hey, big B is gonna be the area of that triangle right there. That's what big B is, the area of that triangle. What's the triangle formula? You guys are doing nice, good, good work today. Eight, what's the triangle formula? One half. Base times height. Can somebody give me those two numbers? What's the base and the height of that triangle? There's no Pythag or anything needed. It's there. What's the base and the height of the that triangle? Here we go. 21. 18 and 6. Good work. All right. Here's where I got to slow down. Hey, 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 that's just capital B, isn't it? Now I still got to multiply by this H. And what's that H represent? The height of the triangular prism. So what's the distances between the two triangles? That's your height. What's the height of this triangular prism? 21 again? 24. Good work. Good work. Okay, the hard one's out of the way. What about the uh, rectangular prism? What do you got to multiply to find that volume? Uh, six. Good work as well. All right, here we go. Let's find the volume. I'm getting 1296 for the triangular prism and 3,888 for the rectangular prism. Total volume, 5,184 cubic feet. All good? We got to slow down or we're all right before I get to BTUs. Okay, now let's figure out how many BTUs I need. 
you read you read the problem again and it uses two and a half BTUs per cubic foot. And I know right now there's people in this room that are gonna go 50-50, do I multiply or divide by two and a half? And you're not gonna know if you're right or wrong. You're not gonna have any confidence in yourself. That's fine. Here's what we did the other day. Make a proportion so you can figure out what you do with the two and a half. One cubic foot equals 2.5 BTUs. Make a proportion out of it. Where do you think I'm going to put the 5,184? Below the one or below the two and a half? Yeah, because it's feet. 5,184, how many BTUs? Now does that make that problem a lot easier, doesn't it? Now you're really confident, real confident that you have to multiply by two and a half. Make a proportion out of it. Start with the conversion, then put your answer under where it has to be. So I am getting 12,960 right now. And I said right now because we're not ready to go to number three because we need to read the problem carefully. What am I uh, omitting? Mahmoud? There's windows that uh, give 1,000 BTUs, need 1,000 BTUs, right? How many windows? Four. What is 100 or 1,000? 1, 1,000, right? So four windows, 1,000 BTUs a piece. Got to add those in. Got to add those in. Sixteen thousand nine hundred and sixty BTUs. They cool the room. How do you feel about that one, huh? We haven't even got to number three. Ho oh, ho! You may, if you got water, you can take a swig and uh, take a couple breaths, stretch out. Are we all good on this one? Before you see what's in store next. Okay, now we are getting back to density. Did you get a chance to read about the bricks yet? If not, let's go. Oh boy. All right, let's talk. Can the trailer hold 500 bricks or not? We're not going to know until we know the weight of one brick, right? It'd be nice to know how much one brick weighs so I can multiply it by 500 and see if it falls below, above or below the 900 kilograms, all right? So that's what we're gonna do, find the weight of a brick. So if you think about density, which part am I solving for? D, M, or V if I want the weight of one brick? What am I gonna be solving for here? Tammy? Uh, M. I'm going to be solving for M. That'll give me the weight of one brick. So I need the density and I need the volume to solve. Look at your problem right here. Anybody know what this 1920 is? Look at the label. Kilograms per meter cubed. What are they giving me? And it says it anyway, Christ. They're giving me the density. All right, but does everyone see, even if I didn't say the word density, kilo, mass over volume. So that's 1920 over, they don't give me the volume because darn it, I've been doing this volume unit for days and I should be able to find it on my own. 
Brick, 5.1 by 10.2 by 20.3. How can I find the volume of a brick? I hate to break it to you, but you're not doing it correctly. You want to inform us, Serena, why most of your uh, classmates are just multiplying those three numbers and then doing it incorrectly? Well, I was wondering, can you, like, convert it afterwards? No. No, and I'll tell you why in a second. Hey, 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 and nobody, Serena just said convert and people's head blew off. Look at the density, ready? The density is what? Kilograms per, per what? Meter cube, but that bricks in what? Can't happen. It's got to be all this, it's got to be the same dimensions as the density. And the answer is no, we can't convert it at the end because here's why. One meter equals, anybody know? How many centimeters? 100 centimeters. Here's why you can't convert it at the end, Serena, and everybody else. My answer, if you multiply these right now, would be what? Centimeters cubed. And one meter cubed does not equal 100 centimeters cubed. So that's why I don't want you to convert it at the end, because you're not going to actually end up dividing by 100 and getting the correct answer. Yes? Can you just divide by a million? You can divide by whatever 100 cube is, yeah, if you want to do it that way. Yeah. But it's not 100. All right, that's the point I'm trying to drive across. You can't divide by 100 at the end, but you can do it right now. All right, next thing I got to go over. How do you convert it? Do I multiply, divide by 100? It's that same darn problem we had with the BTUs. Make a proportion out of it. So let me convert 5.1 centimeters. How many meters? And then you'll start establishing a pattern. Maybe you don't have to set up a, two more proportions to figure out the other two. How many meters are in 5.1 centimeters? 0.0, 0 0.51. Hey, you still don't know what to do? Keep writing a proportion. Don't give me this, oh, my friend next to me can do it like that. I'm an honor, so I shouldn't have to do it. Baloney. Do it again if you have to. Now put in 10.2 over Y now and figure it out. Whatever's going to get it done. If you see the pattern, great. Use it. If you don't, keep writing proportions. Now find the volume. Now find the volume. But now 0 0.051 times 0 0.102 times 0 0.203. And I, I, it's a broken record, but what are you not doing to this number? Don't round it on your own. Something's going to happen. We might be off by a kilogram. There's your volume. Go back to your density formula. Plug it in for volume and solve for the mass of one brick now. Cross multiply and solve for the mass of one brick. What units is my brick in right now? This is 2.027531529. What units? 
What units is the mass in? And you can go back to the density. What units was our density in? What unit? Kilograms. So that's what your answer is in kilograms, all right? Whatever the density was in, that's, the, that's what you got your mass in. How many bricks? That's one brick, though. How many do I have? 500. So what can I do here to finish this off to figure out uh, how much 500 bricks cost? Finish it up here. Or cut, Wade. 18? There you go. So I'm going to do 500 times 2.2753152 per brick. You don't even need to write out the full thing. You know the answer as soon as you see it on your calculator, don't you? This is about 1,014 kilograms. So trailer going to hold them or no? Nope. So trailer will not hold. Five hundred bricks. And somebody asked in second period because it says justify your answer at the end of this problem. You want me to justify it? Here you go. All right, there we go. There's my justification. All this work. I don't need an essay written why I can't. All right. Yes, Paul, go ahead. If I do 0 0.051 times 0.102 times 0.203 and then multiply that by 500 and then put that times 1900 to find that. Times 19... 20, you mean? Yeah. 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 It's all it's all multiplication, Paul, so the order doesn't matter, remember. Okay? Anybody else? All right, let's go. You're not wasting the time here. Go, flip it over. Sure. So let me stop the old video here.